was rough years up till then. <laughs> Today, after 11 command performances before the kings and queens of England, dozens of films, hundreds of records, and thousands of concerts, she is considered Great Britain's foremost musical star. Here's Miss Gracie Fields. Watch out for him. I do, love. I, I'm doing. Bless your heart twice. Oh, God, don't you wake him up. Take Pat him up twice in this. Pat O'Brien. Mm. Yes. It's a shame she didn't live in your neighborhood. Sit over here, please, oh, Miss Fields. Good job for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just the song? Thing. What? In 1955, I was in Capri. See? Did you see her? No, she wasn't at home, but she had the most beautiful home you've ever looked at up on the mountain there in Capri. Oh, yeah. And I've I seen went pictures all the way up there, and yeah, there yeah. she was out someplace making money. <laughs> <laughs> they played you on with the Isle of Capri. That song was written for you, wasn't That's it? That's right. It was okay. written for me, and I, I wouldn't dare sing it because I didn't want anybody to know that I'd fallen in love. Ah. Oh. The songwriter knew. Oh, oh did he? <laughs> How long ago did you buy a home on Capri? Oh, well, I went to Capri when I was 27. And I, with two friends, and I said, this is the place to have when I get old. When I'm 50, I'll be old, and I'd like to buy a bit of ground here and uh, just uh, keep it. Oh. And that's what happened. Mm. Oh, wow. And then when I reached my 50s, I met the... Uh, boyfriend I should have met years ago. It took a long time ago. So. And you're married? And we've been married 26 years. Oh. That's nice. Ooh. That is nice. And you love every inch of that place, don't you? I like it very, very Do you hate much. it when the tourists come? I've been very happy. And we opened a, a restaurant oh. and a swimming pool because, you know, you used to have a rock sticking in your behind when you sat down there. There was nowhere to sit, no beach. No, the beaches, they called them beaches, but they were all rocks. That's right. So I thought it would be wonderful to make a swimming pool and let people have a promenade to walk on and sit on. And I get the greatest kick seeing the place full, not for the money, just to see people who are enjoying themselves can sit in a lovely chair with an umbrella and enjoy the sunshine and swim and sit properly. What year was that you built that? 1950. Well, I was in 55 and no wonder I got a seat. That's, That's right. right. You, you were just in time. Just in Gracie, time. Gracie, what is the best night of your professional career? The best night of my professional career? As you sit now and I think, think back. I think in my hometown just now. I've been to my hometown where I was born in the north of England, Rochdale. I had a letter in February asking me from a professor, would I come to Rochdale and open a school that his students were trying to build a lovely theater there. And when it would be finished, they would like to christen it the Gracie Fields Theater. Well, I couldn't say no. I said, OK. Well, when I got to Rochdale, I had to open a, a museum, an art gallery, a, a market. The Duke of Edinburgh had gone to open in June, because the market wasn't ready. So I opened the market too, and I opened the Gracefields Theatre and did a show there. I didn't think I could do it because I don't sing in Capri, you see. And I did a show for them. And believe me, I was 30 years younger than I am today when I did that show. It just all came out, bing, all you know? <laughs> I suppose when the tourists, or when anybody gets within a foot of you, there's always one song that I remember oh, all yeah. my life that's associated with you. Uh-huh. It, 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 do they all want you to just to even <laughs> sing that one line of that song? That one line I've always got to sing. I just even had to sing it in Rochdale, so we got it down. For years we had an aspidestra. 
in the flower pot, on the whatnot, near the act stand in the hall. <laughs> it didn't seem to grow till one day our brother Joe had a notion that he'd make it strong and tall. So he crossed it with an acorn from an oak tree. Then he planted it against the garden wall. Well, it shot up like a rocket till it's nearly reached the sky. It's the biggest aspidestra in the world. <laughs> we couldn't see the top of it, it got so blooming high. It's the biggest aspidestra in the world. The pussycats and their sweethearts love to spend their evenings out. Up the biggest aspidestra in the world. They all begin meowing when the buds begin to sprout from the biggest aspidestra in the world. The dogs all come around for miles, a lovely sight to see. <laughs> they sniff around for hours and hours, wagging their tails with glee. So I've had to put a notice up to say it's not a tree, it's the biggest aspidestra in the world. Yeah. Tracy the last time you were here, it was in connection with a book you'd written. Oh, they wrote the life story. Yeah, but the life has continued on, and well, with a lot of more we've fulfilling done 26 things. 26 years. It got up to meeting Boris, and Boris was just in time to write his own bit about himself, and then that was the end of it. Mm. They keep wanting me to write more life stories. I said, no, everybody knows enough about me. So no, Boris don't. was in Capri. No, they don't. Was he a... a, a Boris was in Capri, living between a beach and myself. And I never oh. knew him until 1950. How'd you meet him? He came to mend my radio gramophone, a new gramophone I got from uh, Double Days. And it, they always break in the records. So he came to mend it. And I didn't speak to him the first year because I when I go for a holiday, I used to have a holiday every year. That's why I never went into any show. I was always up at all the Ethel Merman shows for England. Oh, but I said, if I get in a show, if it's good, I can't leave it. And I must go to Capri, I said, for three weeks every year. And I want to go in the summertime. So I turned all the shows down. Will <laughs> you come and talk to the American Say, women? what are you doing, signing everybody here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. Here for just a minute. If I can get, if the American women would love to hear you more than anything on earth. Oh, if I get up a, a several hundred of them, will you come and talk to them for me? I always feel nobody knows me in America. Everybody oh, they knows silly. You. Everybody knows. Well, it's such a long answer time. Answer my question. What are you trying yeah. to get it on tape, huh? <laughs> The answer. Well, you taught me, love. I don't know what to talk about, anyway. Oh, I'll that was, I'll you filled the book, the, didn't I'll you? ask the questions. You, you ask the questions, come. and I'll tell you the lies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this message.